Hello and welcome to True Crime Edition. Thank you so much for being here with me today. My name is Elizabeth. Before we get to this case, we want to extend out our thoughts and prayers to the loved ones and friends of Georgia Williams. If you're looking for beautiful scenery, rich history, great food and look no further than Chopshire, England. It has it all. Everything that you could ever imagine. But in this case, no one ever imagined it would happen. Georgia Williams was born in Shropshire, England on September 7th, 1995. From the time that she was born, she was very smart, caring, and she was full of life. She was very close to her family, was very tight-knit. She lived with her father, Stephen, who was a detective with the West Mercia Police. Her mother's name was Lynette, and she had an older sister named Scarlett. Georgia was a straight-A student, head girl at her school. She was even a cadet in the Air Training Corps, hoping one day that she would become a Royal Air Force paramedic. She had always dreamed of being. She loved the outside, playing sports. She was always up for whatever came her way. Now her friends and loved ones would describe her as having an infectious personality and a smile that would light up the room. When she became old enough to work, she got a part-time job at a local gas station. It didn't take long that she had made friends with all her colleagues. Among these group of friends, there was a 23-year-old, Jamie Reynolds. George's family had met him on occasion working at the gas station, and they would describe him as quiet and very polite. He had been in her sister's Scarlet School. He was a little older than Georgia. As time went by, Jamie Reynolds started to develop a liking for Georgia, and he did not hide the fact that he did. Georgia did not share the same feelings toward him. She had rejected his advances, but she still spent time with him as friends. And she was very polite, and she was friendly to him. Georgia was the type of person that she wanted to be friends and continued to spend time with him and made sure that he was included. She herself was bullied as a young child, so she knew how it felt of being left out. And she never wanted anyone that she hung out with to feel the same as she had felt. Jamie worked at the same gas station full time. He did tell Georgia that he had an interest in photography, that this is what he wanted to pursue as a career and not just working at this gas station. Georgia and all her friends had encouraged him. She had offered to help him in any way she could. Then he asked Georgia if she would mind modeling for some photos that he would use in his portfolio. And she gladly accepted and said yes. They had made plans for her and a group of her friends to meet up at Jamie's parents' house on May 26th of 2013 for the photo shoot. It was around 7.30 p.m. Georgia had left the family barbecue to meet up with Jamie and some of her friends. She had told her family she would be back later. Georgia was a very responsible person and always reliable, and Jamie's house was only a few minutes away on foot, so her parents had agreed. 
A few hours had went by with no word from Georgia, and her mother Lynette had sent her text message asking her how everything was going and when should they respect her back home. She had got a text back saying that although the photo shoot was done, she wanted to hang out with her friends for a while longer, and she did not know when she would be coming back home. She did put her usual three kisses at the end of the message. On Monday morning, Lynette woke up around 6 a.m. She had went to check on her daughter to see if she had been home. As she went into George's room, she noticed that her bed had not been slept in. Lynette tried to get concerned. She sent another text to her phone asking where she was at, and she did finally get a response a few hours later saying that she lost track of time and stayed at her friends and forgot to message her and to let her know. At the end of the message, she said, my battery is dying too. Lynette knew this was no common thing for her daughter to do, that she would never want to cause anyone to worry, and she never failed to let anyone know where she was. Now this morning, Georgia was to go to a music festival and then go take her driving lesson. Her parents knew that her missing both of those was a concerning sign. As it had got on Tuesday morning and no word from Georgia, it had been two days now and her parents started to panic. They had started to call her friends to see if any one of them had seen or heard from Georgia, which all said no, they had not heard from her. By now her parents had called Georgia's phone and it had went straight to voicemail. Her boyfriend Matthew had went on Facebook to make a desperate appeal. Quickly, the word had spread of her being missing. And then her parents had went straight to the police to make a missing persons report. 17 year old who's a former head girl and the daughter of an officer of the West Mercia Force was last seen at 7.30 on Sunday evening, leaving her family home here in Wellington. Her parents thought she was going to spend the night with friends. I'd like to um, speak direct to Georgia if I can. Georgia, if you're listening to us at this moment in time, you're not in trouble. Please contact the police or your parents. We are extremely concerned. Uh, we want to make sure you're safe and well. Her parents had told the police that she had spent the evening with Jamie Reynolds. As the police did a background check on Jamie, they had immediately became concerned. In 2008, he was 17 years old and he had attempted to strangle a 16 year old girl when he had lured her on false pretenses of helping her with a project. He got off with just a warning. The youth offending team and mental health services made visits to Jamie to assess the situation further. His parents told the team that he had been obsessed with violent pornography and snuff films that it had rape and asphyxiation in them. Also, they had found really disturbing pictures of schoolgirls in uniforms. He had drawn over them and made nooses around their necks. After the team had made the visit, they had determined that he was a significant risk in giving it to this to the police, but unfortunately, the police did not take any action, believing that the case had been, in their words, suitably resolved. Then in 2011, Jamie was on the police radar once again. He had purposely ran into a colleague's car after she had rejected him romantically. The police did not do a background check and they never linked the case from 2008. With CCTV and a number plate recognition, Jamie and his van was seen at a cheap hotel almost 300 miles away from Glasgow, Scotland. There was no sign of Georgia Williams. They did find CCTV footage of him in a car park where he was changing clothes next to the van. Shropshire police had contacted the police in Scotland and he was taken in for some questioning. 
He had told them he knew nothing of George's whereabouts. The police were not satisfied with this, and they had arrested him due to his background history and brought him back to Shropshire for further questioning. But Jamie was still saying nothing. He had denied all the allegations. Was the next morning at 5 a.m. A senior police officers had went to the Williams home and knocked on the front door. The parents of Georgia knew right away that their beautiful daughter was gone and she was no longer alive. The detectives had headed back to Georgia's last known location. It was at Jamie's house. They had done a thorough and in-depth search of the place for any signs of what had happened to her. What they had found was horrified, even to the most experienced and tenured investigators. They had found a camera in the house and it contained a memory card. It looked like someone had tried to wipe it clean, unfortunately for the officers. They had not done a good job and did not succeed. What they found was horrific, sickening picture of what had happened to Georgia Williams. It had become clear to officers that they discovered 16,800 images and 72 videos of extreme pornography on his computer. Georgia alive would be seen grinning at the camera with a noose around her neck a landing of the house while Jamie was taking pictures. And just seconds later, Jamie Reynolds throttling Georgia with that same rope. The pictures and video showed that Georgia had been forced on top of a box. He had built a terrifying hanging mechanism in the loft hatch of his parents' semi-detached home. You see, his parents were on a bank holiday trip to Italy, so he could do whatever he wanted to do. He had a noose around her neck. Then Jamie had kicked the box right out from under her, and he hanged her. She had been photographed and videoed like this all over his house. Then after he was done, he had raped her dead body. He had repeatedly had sex with her corpse in various rooms of the house, even on his parents' bed, in which he had also photographed and videotaped it. The detectives had found out that he had spent five months writing a twisted tale about murdering Georgia like this. With what they saw, the officers had arrested Jamie and charged him with the murder of Georgia Williams. But when asked where her body was at, he had refused to let them know. Detective Sergeant assigned to assist in the case, he had described him as someone playing games. The police had started to form a timeline of Jamie's movements in the days after George's disappearance. It was the CCTV footage that had played the vital role in adding to this case. Was the day after George had went missing, CCTV footage shows Jamie filling up his van with fuel, but no one had a clue at that time when he was filling the van that George's dead body was in the back of the van. He had drove 60 miles to Wrexham in Wales, where he had stopped to watch a film in a cinema. He had watched the Fast and Furious film. This was the same movie that he had tried to get Georgia to watch with him. With Jamie in custody, the police had went to the public for help. 
Police say they urgently need information about a vehicle driven by the suspect. I'd like to concentrate the, the public's mind, please, uh, on a vehicle, which is the vehicle I have to my left here. It's the uh, highest van CX06 ASV. The last time we identified that vehicle was at five o'clock uh, in Wrexham, uh, in North Wales. Following that, we identified the vehicle at 10.30 p.m. that evening, so a gap of about five and a half hours uh, in Queen's Ferry, Cheshire, heading north. And we're obviously very keen from the public, or from anyone who has information, to identify where that vehicle may have been in that five and a half hour gap. Many people did come forward saying that they in fact did see Jamie, that they had helped him at the side of the road when his van got stuck. When the police had heard the location, they had went out to the spot and they knew it was only a matter of time that they would find the body of Georgia. It was on May 31st, five days after she had gone missing, they did find the naked body of Georgia she was barely hidden in the woodland area near Wrexham. Jamie Reynolds was then officially charged with the murder of her. Nobody knew for sure how he would plead in court. It was on December 2, 2013, he had appeared at the Stafford Crown Court Georgia's father said he had watched Jamie before he had entered the courtroom, as Jamie laughed and joked, showing no remorse or care of murdering his beloved daughter. Just before he had entered the courtroom, his demeanor quickly changed, though, to meek and childlike. Jamie Reynold pleaded guilty to the murder. This was a relief to the family of Georgia. Psychiatrist who examined the sick and depraved 23-year-old had said if he had not been caught, he would have progressed to become a serial killer. On December 19th, he had been given the hardest sentence possible under British criminal law, a whole life order, meaning he will never get out of prison. He became one of the youngest people in British criminal history to receive this kind of sentence. At the time of Jamie's sentencing, Mr. Justice Wilkes said, The sentence I pass on is one in life imprisonment. The early release provisions are not to apply to you. I make a whole life order. In 2014, Jamie had appealed this sentence, but the Court of Appeals said there is no possible way a whole life order could be argued against, and the sentence was just. With this, his appeal was quickly denied. Now in lieu of all this, an investigation was launched on how Jamie Reynolds' previous attacks on women were handled by the police, was carried out, and subsequently six officers from the West Mercer Police were served with misconduct notices regarding the 2008 case review, which this had ended the life of this beautiful girl. Georgia's parents said that they wept when they read the serious case review. They told the newspaper, having lost Georgia to pure evil, we cried when we read this report and the failings of all agencies involved because it was so obvious that Reynold was, if not one already, a murderer in the making. Georgia's death could have been prevented. This once lively, beautiful girl, she had trusted her co-worker, believing in his dream to become a photographer. Little did she know, he had started writing a script called Georgia Williams in Surprise in January, and he finished it three weeks before her murder. After describing her hanging from the rope, he had wrote, I can't wait to see you dance with me. I like my girls dead. This was a quality show, babe.
The memory of Georgia Williams was honored by the local community. They had raised more than 2,000 pounds for a memorial bench to be made for her. Her family had also started the Georgia Williams Trust. This helps young people to pursue their passion in life with the help of grants and partnerships. The family and friends of Georgia will never forget her smiling face, her bubbly attitude, and her willingness to help others. This was Georgia. She had big dreams, wanting to serve. This is the end of this case. I want to thank you for being here, guys. Please, if you would be so kind to hit the like button and subscribe to our channel. This would help us a lot. Until the next case, you all take care and be safe.